When I was 29, I was quite the seductress. I walk into my boyfriend David's Capitol Hill apartment. I whip off my trench coat and my purple boa to reveal my red silk negligee I just bought at Victoria's Secret. I lean in to kiss him, and he says, um, Elizabeth, have you thought about becoming a lesbian? <laughs> what the fuck? Talk about killing a moment. David, you're just pushing me away. You need to go back to therapy. Come on, Elizabeth. I mean, men are dogs, and women are amazing, and you love going to those weird goddess circles and women's dinner parties, and <clears throat> I can introduce you to some feminist lesbians. David, I did not grow up being attracted to my gym teachers. I'm driving home that night, I'm thinking, why did David ask me that question? Am I attracted to women? Could I be bisexual? Or is becoming a lesbian a viable option? Well, I take it to my therapist, who's straight, very open-minded, and she says, well, I think you should just embrace the not knowing and enjoy exploring your sexuality. So I soon become friends with a woman named Cindy I worked with at a women's counseling center where I was a therapist. And Cindy's a little older, about 36. She has short, spiky blonde hair. and She's a Berkeley, California, braless, Birkenstock-wearing kind of gal. <laughs> And I'm mesmerized by Cindy. We have a three-hour lunch and discover we're both reading the same book, Women Who Run With the Wolves, about the wild woman archetype. Well, we really connect, and I, I decide to confide to her about David. I say, Cindy, I, I think I'm going to break up with my boyfriend, David. He, he asked me the oddest question mid-makeout. He asked me if I'd thought of becoming a lesbian. Well, have you, Elizabeth? <laughs> oh, no, I, I love women in that steel magnolias kind of way, but I'm, I'm still attracted to guys. Well, we'll see about that. So the next weekend, Cindy invites me to her house, and she cooks me dinner, and we sit down to watch a movie, Desert Hearts, the lesbian classic. For those of you do, who don't know about that, it's about this older woman, a professor who falls in love with a younger woman set on a ranch in the 1950s. So we sit down to watch this movie, and these two beautiful women are kissing, and I discover I'm kind of turned on, and there's sexual tension building between Cindy and me. She scoots in close. And the sexual tension is there, and the cats are feeling it. They circle, <laughs> they circle the couch. And Cindy says, Elizabeth, I want to kiss you. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this, Cindy. So I just close my eyes, and I think, I can just pretend this is a man. And then I notice Cindy's chiseled cheeks and her soft lips, her scent of jasmine with a hint of patchouli, and this is no man. And I like it. And then... Like a lesbian Rhett Butler, Cindy lifts me into her strong butch arms. <laughs> and she carries me up the stairs. She lays me down on her bed. And we rip our clothes off. Cindy is voluptuous and all woman. What do you want, girl? <laughs> I don't know, Cindy. I, I don't even know what lesbians do, but... Just take me! <laughs> and she does. Cindy touches me in ways and places that no man ever has. But am I a lesbian? I don't know. I, I wasn't quite ready to commit to a full-on lesbian relationship. So a guy asked me out, and I'm on this date, and this guy, Michael, says... Elizabeth, I notice you do look at women a lot, and um, if you decide that you're a lesbian or bisexual, hey, that's cool with me. What a relief, y'all. 
friendly encouragement to become a lesbian from yet another man I'm dating. <laughs> well, I go back and forth from women to men to women. I'm confused, and I think, well, I, I think the bisexual identity fits me better. So I notice an ad in the gay newspaper for a bisexual women's potluck. So I call the number. <laughs> Hi, this is Elizabeth. I'm calling about the bisexual women's potluck. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. I'm Sapphire Moonstone. <laughs> We're a feminist sex positive group. We'd love to have you. We're having our dinner this Saturday night. Please come. Okay. So I get my nerve up and I drive way out to the sticks of suburban Maryland out in Howard County. And I knock on the door. And this very large, friendly woman answers with tattoos all over her arms and the most gigantic breasts I've ever seen in my life. She scoops me up to them, wel welcomes me into the fold. Hi, Elizabeth, I'm Ruby Fruit. Come on in and meet the other ladies. So we go into the living room and there are all these friendly women and they're welcoming and then we sing this goddess chant. The earth is our mother, we shall take care of her. The earth is our mother, we will take care of her. Hey, yon, a ho, yon, a he, yon, yon. Hey, yon, a ho, yon, a he, yon, yon. We're having a great time, and then <laughs> feeling all spiritual and sexy, and Ruby Fruit says, well, now we're going to have dinner, and then... Um, we're going to have some optional group sex with our husbands and boyfriends. And Elizabeth, I hope you brought your toys or you can just watch. <laughs> now, I am pretty open-minded, y'all, but this is too much for me. So I gently hand her my homemade red velvet cake. And here you go, Ruby Fruit. You know what? I, I have a puppy. Got to go, but keep the cake. So eventually I do commit to being a lesbian, and 15 years ago I met my soulmate, Marie, and we're married, and I'd much rather whip off my purple boa for her than for any man. Thank you.